Welcome to the Troy Kearns Channel Podcast, where we talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. Today, I'm with a very special guest from Northwest Arkansas, owns over 70 doors, Henry Washington. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a long time coming. I'm glad we could connect. Well, I really wanted to bring you to Vegas or to my new studio when I have it in Kansas City, and that didn't just work out. So I figured, you know, we better do it before time gets away from us. Guess, guess you got to bring me back, man. I'm, I'm for sure. We're gonna do that. <laughs> I was going through the text. I'm like, we're, we're going to Vegas on the next one after we do this one. But we've got a lot in common just from kind of stalking you on social media a little bit. Mm -hmm. You've uh, been active in real estate for a while. Tell me how you got your start in real estate. Yeah, man. Uh, through fear and panic. So uh, I started four years ago, just about four years ago, I bought my first property. And uh, the reason uh, we ended up doing that was, let's see, so I got married uh, pretty quick. So I met my wife, and then 365 days later, we got married. And wow. so prior to us getting married, you know, I was a single guy, and I had a great job. I had a W-2, worked for Walmart, did IT, software development, data analytics, right? Six-figure earner. Um, but what I learned was that... Um, it doesn't matter if you make six figures, if you spend six figures, you're still broke, right? And so I, I was really good at spending more than I made. And um, that was okay as a single person. And then when I got married, uh, my wife wasn't a fan of that. And so I had to figure out how to change up kind of my financial um, acumen, if you could say. And so, um, so I had two wake up calls, Troy. The first one was when we tried to buy a house together, our first starter home together. And the bank would, called and said that they would finance the house only if my name wasn't on the loan. They wouldn't loan to me. Wow. And yeah. so like, you know, you're trying to get you new wife, you're trying to get, you know, be this provider. Right. And it's just like a blow to your ego. And Big time. really just really just kind of showed me that like, you weren't doing the right things in life. And so the next wake up call hit me when my wife and I were having a conversation. So we were talking, we were doing what, what young married couples do, right? You talk about the future. And so we talked about where we were going to live and what our dream house would look like and how many kids we would have. All those, all those things you should enjoy talking about as a new couple. Yeah. And I quickly realized I, I, I couldn't afford to do any of those things. And so it wasn't an enjoyable conversation for me. I, was, was, I, was, I just got scared because I was like, this yeah. woman deserves these things right. and I, I'm in no position to provide her with any of that and so I had a panic attack at about three in the morning that morning and uh woke up and did what anybody would do in that situation I guess is just start googling how can I make some extra money right right and uh and I just kept seeing articles about real estate right. and videos about real estate and that was really my first exposure to like really paying attention to what real estate meant. Because before that, I just assumed only wealthy people owned real estate, right? I never really assumed like I could do it, right? And HGTV was a thing, but it wasn't as big of a thing as it is now, right? And so now it's pretty commonplace for people to realize regular people do it. But, you know, back then it wasn't that, it wasn't that hot yet. And so I uh, ended up watching this TED Talk. It was called uh, How to Design Your Dream Life Through Passive Income. And it was this 20 something year old kid, Alex Step Stepanowski, Stepan he's got a weird last name, but he's a, he's just a kid, man. He had like, he was 20 something years old. He had like 25 doors. This whole talk was about, it was a Ted talk about how he used real estate to become financially free, but essentially it was about passive income. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Right. And so I just decided at three in the morning with no experience that I was going to be a real estate investor. And I decided I was going to figure it out and be good at it. Cause I was like, if this kid's figured it out and regular people can do it, there's, I mean, I'll figure it out. Like, I just, I just, I knew I had to make a shift. And so, you know, from there I took, you know, it was kind of the traditional route of red, rich dad, poor dad. And I kind of, okay. you know, that opens your eyes and makes you feel like you haven't been doing the right things your whole life. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, or I'd you were not that, educated the right way. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So about 90 days later, 
I ended up buying my first property, man. And I and, and I didn't have any money. I had a thousand dollars in my savings account when I started when I when I made my decision to do this. I only had a thousand dollars in a savings account and I had bad credit. And so uh because I made the decision, I mean, I woke up the next morning and I talked to my wife about it and I was like, I think we're gonna figure this out and I'm gonna um I'm gonna start fixing my credit. So I hired somebody to help me fix my credit and uh I had to pay some stuff off that I felt like I didn't shouldn't have had to pay, but you know, I knew that like I either pay it and start this journey or I fight some battle that could take years over a couple of dollars. Right? So I just did stuff, right? So my credit was starting to move in the right direction. And then I just started to learn and I dove in. I started networking because I like I said, I didn't I didn't know what it meant. Like I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I just knew I was gonna figure it out. And so my thought process was like, well. You just go hang around people that are doing it and then maybe you'll figure something out, right? So I, I literally would go to every RIA meetup. If, if investors were talking in a group setting, I was in the room. Like I just went to every meeting I could go to to try to get myself exposure so I could figure out how the heck people were doing this stuff. And then, like I said, I bought my, bought my first property 90 days later without having to use any, well, I used, I used uh, that thousand dollars, but the rest came from, we borrowed against my wife's 401k uh, to buy it. And I didn't even know that that was a, a, a thing. Like I didn't know you could do that. Right. But because but because I surrounded myself with other investors, when this deal came to me, and that's what happened, the deal came to me, right? And it came to me, it, looking back, I've been able to glean all these lessons from the things right. and decisions that I made. I didn't know what I was doing when I was doing it. So I was, <laughs> was, wasn't some brilliant, brilliant guy making these. Just, like I was just like, I just gotta do some stuff. And Sounds like you were taking massive out. action. You were That's taking right. massive action. I see that, that what That's I'm it. hearing, two things I'm hearing, I'm hearing this guy takes massive action when he identifies whatever the issue is. And number two, <laughs> you've got a great wife. That, those are the two <laughs> things. <I've heard. laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, man, once I got that deal under contract, I didn't know how to, how to buy it. I, and I talked to banks and they wanted down payments. And, they wanted 20 grand. I had one and I was like, all right, well, I got 30 days to find $19,000. So, <laughs> but, but because I was networking with all these investors, I was able to go to them and say, how do I do this? Like, how do I find this money? And one of my uh, investor friends who is now actually my business partner, we own 25 doors together. He, he helped me sit there and brainstorm until we figured out, figured out a solution. And he's the one who was like, Hey man, have you heard about 401k loans? And I was like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to pay a bunch of penalties and fees for using the 401k. He was like, no, 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 it's not, you don't extract the money. You like you borrow against your own money. It's like being your own bank. And I was like, I didn't even know that that was a thing. And so we borrowed the 19 grand we needed from the, my wife's 401k. I didn't have one again, not financially savvy before then. So I didn't have one. We borrowed it from there. We bought the property. We raised the rent on the tenants to market rates and it started cash flowing. And uh, it was just, it was, it was beneficial all the way around. And that's what kind of woke me up to the power of real estate because I bought the deal. I paid 115,000 for this house. It was worth 150. I bought it because the buddy of mine that sold it to me was in a tough spot, had to sell it, had to sell it within 30 days. And it had to be sold by a certain date. And so it created this unique opportunity for me. I found the money, I bought it. And then, so like with the 401k loan, you borrow, but you pay yourself back with interest. And so the payments come out of your paycheck pre-tax. And so it reduced our taxable income at the same time as gave us the money that we needed. And then when we bought the property, we raised the rent to cash flow. And then my banker told me, he was like, hey, if you need money to do this again, I know there's equity in this because they just did the eval on it. They were like, why don't you take out a line of credit on the equity and then you'll have some money for your next deal. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, and so then, and then, so a couple of weeks later, I had access to like $25,000 on a line of credit in order to rinse and repeat and kind of do that process again. And so, Troy, when you go from like panicking about figuring out a way to make extra money to take care of your family to like 90 days later, you own a house that's paying you cash flow and the bank gives you access to $25,000, like that's mind blowing. And that's when I knew I was like, oh, this is this is so powerful. This is way beyond how powerful I thought it was. We had wrote down some original goals when we were getting into real estate. I still have them. And I and the original goals were we were gonna, we were gonna try to buy five houses over the next five years. Right. And once we bought that one and I saw right. how powerful I saw that I didn't have to use my money. 
Right. Right. I basically took monopoly money and bought this asset. And then the bank was like, here's $25,000 more. Right. I was like, oh, no, no, no. We're not buying five houses in the next five years. <laughs> like, we're, we're buying five houses this month. Right. And so uh, I, think we, I think we did like 20 some odd deals that year. It's crazy. That's a that is a that is a crazy story. First of all, I want to comment on a couple of things is, you know, I've I've had panic attacks before and I know exactly what they are. It's not a fun experience. No, for sure. no, it's not. Now, you know, going through the situation of do you think you were in a little bit of like denial about your situation or. Oh, yeah. Okay, because it seems like you knew what to do once, like it, it, it sounded like the TED talk planted the seed. And, and once that this guy said that it's possible, like all the, everything came off you and you just took massive action. So, okay. so I think what plays into that is um, I've never been afraid of failure. Don't get me wrong, like I don't wanna fail at anything. Right. But I've I've always been I've always been a, I'll give it a go kind of a guy, right? And yeah. uh, and so when it when it came time to me to kind of you know start my own business, which is essentially what I did when I started real estate investing, right? Um, I didn't have any fear around it because my dad my dad was a high school art teacher his whole career, right? And um, you know teachers just don't the teacher salaries aren't great, right? And so and my dad likes nice things, <laughs> and so he yeah. always had a side hustle, right? Always. Oh. Always had a side hustle. He grow plants in at home and then pot them and take them to the swap meet and sell them at the swap meet. He used, that was before I was born. And then once I was uh, when I was young, he owned an arcade. Back when you used to have to like go to a place to play video right. games, yes. he owned an arc. He owned an arcade, uh, and then he owned that for several years. And then he owned a barbecue restaurant. I basically grew up for like ten years of my life uh, in a barbecue restaurant. And so like. I always saw my dad have side hustle. Now he never talked to me about like being an entrepreneur. He never talked to me about starting my own business. He always just said, go to school, get your degree, go work for a company, you know, and, and get your 401k. And like, that was, that was what he wanted for me. Like he never talked to me about being an entrepreneur, but I always saw him do it. And right. so when it came time for me to do it, I just didn't really have any fear about doing it. Cause I was like, well, my dad did it. So I, can, I can figure it out. So that's great. So I was telling you before we got on the on the podcast that, um, and by the way, guys, while you're listening, make sure you give Henry a five star review. This is an amazing story. I I didn't know it started so just by reading your profile, I wouldn't have guessed it just started like five years ago. Yeah. And I mean, you're obviously a bright guy just because you, you said you worked for Walmart in yeah. IT. That's mm -hmm. not a it's not a dummy job. You can't fake yeah. that, you know. Yeah. So you got you got a highly technical skill, a high paid job. You're spending lots of money and you realize that you're not managing your money properly. Your money's managing you. And That's right. Yeah. And, and so you have a big wake up call with your wife, your new wife, you're planning everything. And then you basically do a whole 180 and turn your life around in like 90 days. That's, that's totally inspiring. Even for me, I've been like, I'm like a snail, but I, not a snail. I'm like a really fast snail, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I I've, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, I'm slow and steady. You know, people always say, well, how'd you get to 350 doors? I said, I started with one, right? And so you're currently, you're at is 70 doors. Yes, yeah, somewhere, I fluctuate between 65 and 70. 65 and 70, what, what is your goal? Like, you, you know, the new year just came. I know you mm -hmm. set goals. Mm -hmm. uh, I also noticed that, um, I don't know if this is true, but one of my goals is to, because I went all in on social media, I got like yeah. attached to it. And I realized yeah. that your response time was less than last time. I'm like, maybe he's doing the same thing I'm doing, which is trying to time slot and allocate so that yeah. his the time is not controlling. Are you doing that as well? Absolutely. Tell me about some of your goals you got for the new year and for the future. 20 doors this year is what we're looking to buy. Um, but I'm probably going to have to expand that. I, had, I already had 20 under contract. I let 10 of them go um, because I feel like I'm a smarter investor now than I was a couple of years ago. Um, there, it's a great deal, the 10 I was going to buy, but it's got potential to be a great headache as well. And I just feel like I can put that money to work on a, on a higher quality asset. Even though it's a great deal, sometimes you got to let a good one go. You can go, you you know, go broke buying good deals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so we've got 10, we've got 10 doors under contract um, that we're going to keep. Uh, right now. And so I'll probably shoot for 30 doors since I've already got 10 under contract in the first month. And then um, I also do, so I, I, you know, I teach people how to do this. I have a coaching and teaching business. 
And so I've worked, I've been working over the past several months to build that business to a place where it's more scalable and we've kind of hit that point. And so now we're expanding it. And so I'm trying to, to reach more people with this information to, hit, to help people get to more freedom. And so uh, short-term goals of 20 doors, the, the longer goal is once I hit a hundred, uh, I'm probably going to look at how many I can sell in order to get um, the majority of my portfolio paid off. Uh, and so I want to get unleveraged on, on, a, on, a, on a good chunk. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to stop buying. It right. just means I want to get a chunk unleveraged so that it, it'll always be there, right? I'll okay. net, that, that chunk is recession proof, right? And it's always going to take care of my family and my family's family, you know, for generations. And so I just want to, I, I want to get to that kind of recession proof chunk and then I'll just keep buying. I always tell people, I don't really have a big sexy answer for like what my long-term goal is. I know a lot of people do, but for me, I love this so much, man. I'm just going to keep buying until God or my wife tells me to stop. Well, that's a, that's a good answer. And you should listen to both of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I did. Um, you're from, you're in Northwest Arkansas. So I'm guessing that, you know, I don't know that area that well. I drove through there on my way to New Orleans. I got a house. I, I saw that you went to New Orleans. I know you're a fan. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I got an Airbnb. If you ever want to go down there, it's on me. Um, okay. All right. Please take me up on it. Um, and you know, when I was driving through Arkansas, I'm, you know, coming through Missouri, I'm like, man, I love this place. It's got so many hiking trails and mountains that yeah. I went through Little Rock and I was like, this is a cool, but I don't, and I, that's why I was like, I need to come down there. Yeah, we were talking come on. To well, yeah I'm, come I'm, on. So where, where are the deals that you're buying? Are you buying them? What cities? Yeah. So I'm in the, the Northwest corner of Arkansas. And so like we border Missouri um, and Oklahoma. Right. And so the, it's kind of like five cities stacked on top of each other. Right. And so there's Bentonville, which is the, the, the northern, well, Bella Vista, but Bentonville is the northern city. That's where Walmart's headquartered. Right. That's where right. they started. That's where they're from. Right. And then below that, you have Rogers, which is a, another decent sized city. And then you've got uh, Lowell, Springdale, and then Fayetteville. Springdale is where Tyson Foods is headquartered. Okay. So Tyson Chicken, all the meat products. Hillshire Farms, all that's Tyson Foods. So that's a huge company that's headquartered here. And then I said Lowell and Lowell JB Hunt Transportation is headquartered there. So oh, like, the big, yeah, that's a big yeah, company. Big two, transportation. Two billion dollar trucking company. See that see them all yeah. over the place. All everywhere you go, you see JB Hunt trucks, right? And so you've got three recession-proof major companies, right? All in this small ish area and so and then Fayetteville sorry is the last city and that's where the University of Arkansas is and so you've got all these cities with all this job growth these companies aren't going anywhere they they thrive in a recession right right when when money's short people more people shop at Walmart right that's true when 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 things get tough you still need trucks on the road to deliver things to people right um people are always going to need food Tyson Foods isn't going anywhere and so that brings this influx of people from all over the world. These are international companies. And so you've got people from all over the world moving here to live here, to work here. And then on top of all that, you have exactly what you mentioned is this, this hiking, biking uh, industry that's here. So Bentonville is like world renowned for their mountain biking. Like people come from all over the country to mountain bike the trails in Bentonville. They're going to have like the national championships here this year or, awesome. next year or something like that. And so uh, it's just a, it's a real outdoorsy tourist destination, right? And so it's kind of this little hidden gem of a market. And, and from a real estate perspective, you get, you know, you get all the things that you want uh, in, a, in a real estate. You get, you get lower entry points because it's still Arkansas, right? And so you're not, you're not paying California prices to buy a house, right? What's an average house price around there? Man, it's going up right now. Um, so, I, you know, typical three bed, two bath, 1500 square foot starter home on, on the market for retail is going to run you anywhere between, well, now probably 200 to 300,000. But it was, like, it was like 125, like two years ago, <laughs> 125 to yeah. 200 a couple of years ago, right? We, we, we know what's going to happen. I, you've been using the word recession a lot, I think. You know, a lot of people are scared to use that word, but that's, I mean, a good real estate investor 
And you also use the word paying off debt. And I want to I want to expand on that a little bit because a lot of people preach debt, debt, debt. And I happen to be in the same school that you're in. I happen to believe, just like we talked about, you talked about monopoly earlier, that your little houses that are paid off are your security blanket, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. people, people can say that's dead money or not, but the reality is if something goes wrong, that leverage can take you all the way under. Yeah. And so, so you're gearing up for, it sounds like you're gearing up for uh, a recession. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of, right? So this was my plan, no matter what the market cycle is, um, was just to have unlevered properties to take care of my family, no, no matter what's going on. Because you're exactly right. No matter what happens, I'll always have that chunk of properties that nobody can take from me, right? That I'm never going to lose. Um, that if I need to lower the rent, you lower the rent because there's no note, right? It's mm-hmm. different thinking when you don't when you have debt when you have debt you have stress just yeah. built into the transaction because and the other people that thing that people don't realize is there's more insurance requirements for title mm-hmm. insurance for homeowners yeah. insurance and all that stuff. One thing to expand on, I, I'm a big Walmart fan. I've read a lot of uh, books about Walmart. So you, yep. Sam Walton built Bentonville, right? Yeah, yes, he did. Yep. He's yeah. I I I wasn't a, around, you know. I was a youngster when he was uh, doing his thing, but mm-hmm. what an inspiring story. And, and, you know, it just shows, to, it goes to show you that like you're in Northwest Arkansas, people who, who are listening to this, they might be in Las Vegas, they could be in Kansas city, but they could be like in small towns in Mississippi that I invested. Would you say that you could make money in any real estate market? 100% without a doubt. It's just look around, right? Take a look around whatever city you're in right now. Step outside and look around. Every person you see, with the exception of a small homeless population, every person you see goes somewhere to put their head down at night. And somebody owns that place. Yeah, you can figure it out. Food, water, shelter. Yeah, you can figure it out. You may have to be creative depending on the market, right? But that doesn't mean it can't be done. Somebody's doing it. Somebody's making a killing on real estate in any in every single market in this country. So it it aggravates me when people say, well, you can't do that in California or I can't do that in New York. Yeah, you can. You just haven't educated yourself enough to know exactly what strategy is going to work in that area. But you can. Well, I mean, they just need to, you know, everybody's got to have a wake up call no matter what it is in life. You know, if you're having a financial issue or you're having a, a drug issue, you're having an alcohol issue, you're having whatever something's got to wake you up because we all live in our own state of denial. Like I was in a fashion denial until I got on social media because (laughs) my buddy, my buddy, Jason Abrams, um, who actually uh, be on our first podcast, um, you know, he's been friends with me for 15 years. He says, Troy, everything you're wearing is like a triple XL. And you know, (laughs) you don't look, you don't look like you you know what you're doing. Like you, you might know what you're doing, but you don't look like you know what you're doing. And, I, and that was the first time that somebody had given me that message that I heard. Now, probably a million people had told me that. <laughs> right, <my wife>. right. <laughs> so sometimes the message is only uh, ready when the messenger is ready to hear it and or t- deliver it or hear it. And it sounds like you've taken massive action and you're continuing to take massive action. I had a couple of questions. You know, when you, where did you get your drive from? Because I'm looking at your website. I went through your website and I'm like, this guy's website is so, I, I have a home buying website. And I'm like, this, yours should be a mock-up template of what a home buying website should look like. Where does all this detail and this drive and this ambition come from? Gosh, man, I have had the blessing of having just amazing parents who always taught me to do my best, the best that I can do. And I didn't always take them seriously. Um, I, you know, I did well in school, but I only did, I did well enough. I did as, as well as I could to get by. Right. Could I have done more? Absolutely. But as, what do you need me to get? As long as I, as long as I get a B, I don't get in trouble. Cool. I'm gonna get B's right. That was, <laughs> that was how I was. And so I've, I've learned as I've gotten older, you know, what you give your, what you give your time to, uh, is important because your, your time is limited. Right. And the older, uh, we, the older we get, the more apparent that becomes. I know 
two things that drive on the on the real estate side is uh, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of 20 year olds out here buying real estate now and you know I'm 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 40 and so I want to get to a place where I can take care of my family and never have to lift a finger again sooner than somebody else right uh, sooner you know if you're 20 you got time you got more time but I'm you know I'm 40 and I don't I don't want to do like don't get me wrong they say real estate's passive income it's not completely passive right like right. even if you don't manage your properties you manage your property managers right like there's there's activity you're doing and and so yeah like I love it but there's still stuff I got to do every day right or else the money stops coming in <laughs> right and so uh I've just wanted to get my portfolio, to get my business to a place where once I know I'm good, I don't have to lift a finger if I don't want to, uh, uh, I'll be I'll be good. And so that, that kind of drives a lot of me just trying to figure things out quickly and and grow at a pace that that works. And where I'm struggling, to be honest, is um, you know where a lot of business people tend to struggle. But like I'm still kind of uh, I've only got a few people that work for me. Like I need to bring in more people. It's tough uh, in order to grow my business. It's hard relinquishing of those activities um, to focus on what's more important or what's going to drive drive the the financial needle the most, right? And so, I struggle with that aspect of it. But I just want to get to where I need to get to sooner, so that I can spend these years past forty enjoying more time versus working and building a business. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. And I think it's smart for you to do that. And, you know, you might think that 40 is old, but I think it's young and you look good and you, <laughs> you got a good, healthy mind and a good, healthy attitude. Yeah. And that, that'll that take you a long way in life in general. I mean, if more people, and I know you're all over social media, you got 50 something thousand followers on Instagram, you've got a bigger pockets, so you were a guest host on there. Yeah. If people are interested in following your story and learning, where do they, how can they hook up with you? Yeah, Instagram's the best place to to kind of connect with everything I got going on. So the link in my bio's got access to kind of anything that I do as far as teaching, coaching. There's a free I can go to, I got a free book at henrywashington.com. You can go check out that free book. It's how I finance all my deals. Um uh, but that's the that's the best place to to find me and get a hold of me, man. But I want I want to say something on your on your last question again too. Sure. Like the, yeah, please. The, the the other driver for just kind of making sure you do things in the right way is that as soon as I found real estate, like as soon as I did that first deal, I told you that like it was eye opening. The other thing that hit me at that same time was like I had this overwhelming urge this responsibility I felt like I had now to share this with as many people as possible because it wasn't something I knew. And you're right. I turned my life around in 90 days and I just wanted more people to know that they could do the same thing. I wanted more people to feel like they weren't trapped in whatever situation they were in. Like, cause I'm, I'm no rocket scientist. Like I just started doing stuff and then made adjustments right until it worked. Right. <laughs> and anyone can do that and so i just i became so passionate about wanting to share this with other people and because of that i feel a responsibility to make sure that the things i put out like make sense and are truly helpful to people because i want to guide people down the right path that makes sense yeah it does make sense because it sounds like you know you you know, we're kind of on that same thing. The reason I actually got on social media was exactly the same reason that you were. I was watching a bunch of guys and I'd been active in real estate for a long time and I'd been inactive in social media because I felt like it was bragging, right? I felt, I didn't understand it. I thought like, oh, these guys are bragging. They say they got this, they say they got that. They're bragging about it. But what really is happening is they're trying to inspire people. Mm -hmm. That's what my narrow-minded uh, thinking got me because it doesn't matter whether you're, you don't understand real estate or you don't understand finances or you don't understand social media, you have to be open-minded in life to get ahead. Yes. And, and you, and you just spoke to, I mean, you were a high earner, you're a six figure earner, but you had a, you had big spending habits, which you can have, you know, because you make a lot of money. But the, the fact of the matter is I always say time is on your side with real estate. If you invest today and somebody's paying that mortgage for the last five years that you have, that's being paid off. You know, as long as you're disciplined with your money and 
that's what you're trying to tell people right now is like yeah. the amount of outs that you have that like when you bought that property and then you had an extra twenty thousand dollars that came out to you you have so many more outs and so many more like when you get fired from a job you have one out go look for another job <laughs> it's it yes yeah absolutely man it's just it's such a powerful tool and i just wanted to spread that with as many people as possible because i feel like you know with this with this knowledge and with this well it's not it's not for me sure i've never felt like it's for me i felt like i get to reap the benefits of it while it's here but it's not for me to get it and then do this it's for me to get it and then do this right and so i'm always trying to give it right whether it's giving of the money or giving of the information i don't feel like god bless me with the money or the knowledge so that i can hoard it he gave it to me so that i give it to other people right? right and then you just create this ripple effect of people helping people helping people helping people right? sure. and that's how the world that's how the world gets better that's how people it's totally true i mean if you it, you know i think we see the good and the bad with social media you get the people who are like just put out a video about how to start investing in real estate and their question is how to start it's like um <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, um, yeah. and it just goes to show you is just take massive action like Henry Washington did. And it's going to, you know, if you're if you're listening to this show right now and I, I can tell you, I've looked at my audience and it's male 85 percent. And it's, you know, between the ages of 17 to 40, right in our ballpark. And if you're listening and you're at that age right now and you just found out that Henry Washington within five years turned his life around. He owns 70 doors of property right now. And he's building on that. He's going to buy another 30, 30, 40 deals this year. And he's able to now give away money when you started with only a thousand dollars in your bank account being denied on your home yeah. loan, which yes. pretty much puts you in a really awkward position with your new wife. Thank God yeah. you guys are on the same page with everything. Absolutely. So would you say that your one of your single best decisions was getting married? Such a cheat code to life. Marrying the right person is such a cheat code to life. Um, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be where I am. It literally wouldn't be here without her. She we used her 401k to buy our first property. And when uh, when I was starting on the journey within that 90 days, I actually met with a guy who I really looked up to, who owned a bunch of property and some businesses. And, and, you know, when I, when I talked to him about my plans, he really discouraged me from getting started. And so I was, you know, and I, and I agreed at the time, I agreed with what he was saying. He made it, he made it sound like it made sense. Right. right. And so I, I came back and told my wife and I was like, man, we probably just need to hold off until we get X, Y, and Z and A, B, and C. And she was like, no, no, you said you were going to do this. And I believe <laughs> you can do this. So yeah. you need to do it. Right. And, you know, so I literally wouldn't be here without her. Such a strong bond that you can have with your, you know, I, I, I put the TikTok the, out the other day. I had a, a partners of mine on real estate. They're actually, my partner's in New Orleans. You know, we own a bunch of stuff together and they've, they've been kind of uh, fanning their neck at me a little bit on some of these storage deals. And so I always say that my wife is down for any sort of crazy, because I'm the crazy guy trying all these ideas. And she's like, yeah, I believe in you. Whatever you want to do, it's, and it sounds like you've got that same relationship there. 100%. Yeah. It's a very special one that I think that people should understand too, not just from investing in real estate, but whoever you have in your life, whether they're the guy telling you not to do something, mm -hmm. look at what they have. Do they have what you want? If they don't have what you want, then you shouldn't be listening to their advice, first of all. Right, right. They do have, and most people that I know who have good lives, they have great relationships with their spouse. They talk, mm -hmm. talk about things that are uncomfortable and their spouses work in the same business that they're in because it's a yes. family business yeah. building a legacy. Is that true for you and your wife? My, my wife is my property manager. Okay. So you can't fire yeah. her. No, I, I cannot <laughs> fire her. She manages, she, she took over the property management from me once I started teaching and coaching and really wanting to expand that. I had to give up some of the the day to day on the investment side, and so she took over the property management. Um, and I and really all I told her was like, "Hey, this is something I need help with. If you if we if you want to outsource it, I'm okay with that." And she was like, "Well, now nah, I'll go figure it out. And then if I don't like it, I'll outsource it." So she's been running with it and doing a great job. It's awesome.
That's that's great. I'm I'm happy to hear the story. I I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here. I, I want to. I got a few more questions I wanted to yeah. ask. You're from Arkansas. You're born and raised there. No, no, no. Born and raised in California, and then uh, moved to Virginia to go to school. And I worked in uh, after I graduated. I worked out there for a while, Virginia Beach area, Hampton Roads, and then moved to Arkansas to work for Walmart. So I've been here for eleven years. Do you plan on going back to California? Do you think it's important, like with this with this COVID nineteen? I know you've seen a shift, especially in Arkansas. I mean, we we moved to the Midwest because of COVID nineteen. I yeah. can tell you that's a fact. Are a lot of people right now moving to Northwest Arkansas because of COVID nineteen? No, I don't think people are moving here because of COVID. I think people have always been moving here because of the industry that's here. I still think it's pretty much a hidden gem, unless you know about Walmart or Tyson or any of these other companies or the mountain biking. Like people pretty much don't know about this area. And so even so Northwest Arkansas was one of the places, I don't know if you remember during COVID, there was like five or six cities in the country that were paying people like $10,000 if they moved here and just worked remotely for their companies they were working for. Um, so Northwest Arkansas was like paying, giving people $10,000 if they relocated to this area during COVID because, you know, people were just moving all over the place because they could work remote. Right. Yeah. So they were they were trying to incentivize people to move here at that point. Why are they trying to get so many people to go there? Because I know Arkansas is a very desolate state. And I got, yeah. a, I got a ticket for going 92 someplace there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a desolate state. Uh, it's, it's uh, but in this, in this like, North, I call it a bubble here in Northwest Arkansas. Because when you come here, it doesn't feel like Arkansas. It feels like a, a, a big city somewhere right now. There isn't all the crazy tall buildings, but it's still, it's got this like big city vibe even though it's a, a smaller city. We've got, you know, one of the world renowned museum that they built here, Crystal Bridges Museum of Modern Art. And then it's just, it's just, it's got so much culture for, 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 and that's not a word you would think somebody in Arkansas would say, but it totally is. There's a lot of culture. I, I, definitely, I, definitely, <laughs> I think that Arkansas gets a bad rap. I mean, you got a former. Now, if you drive an hour in any direction outside of this bubble, Arkansas is exactly what you think it is. But like in this bubble, it's it's crazy, man. It's it's there's so much there's so much wealth here, and there's so much culture because people could literally come from all over the world to live here because of the companies. What part of California are you from? Bakersfield. It's about an hour and a half north of LA. Yeah, close to Las Vegas. I know. I yep. know. I, yep. I know Bakersfield. I've been to Vegas many times. Bunch of oil fields out there in Bakersfield. That's, that's right. That's right. What what would you tell somebody who's listening to this show right now in terms of if they're if they're th if they're working their job and they've kind of obviously if they're listening to a podcast about real estate and they're following us and they're following you and they're, they're getting inspired they're going to put it on the shelf maybe and think about it for a little bit what would you tell them right now the three tips i'd give somebody if you're getting started no matter what your situation is if you want to do this is make the decision right literally decide i think people don't understand how powerful decision is right like it's a mindset thing, right? And I know people say, oh, you're gonna tell me to have the right mindset, but, but it's true, right? Make a decision, because when you make a decision, you've told your brain that we're doing this, right? And so your brain now operates from a place of, we're doing this. And so as you get started, when you run into roadblocks, your brain is already trying to figure out solutions for the problem, because you told it, we're doing this, right? Most people say, real estate seems cool. I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes, right? You didn't tell your brain to solve problems. You just told your brain, we're going to try it, and then we're going to hit a problem. So it's anticipating you hitting a problem, but it's not going to help you solve it. Because all you said was, I'm going to give it a go, right? But if you decide, your brain's going to help you figure out how to navigate issues. So you have to make a decision and be serious about it. Like you just, I'm not saying you have to know what your next step is. You just have to decide. I will be good at this, right? Step two and three are easy because real estate's so flexible. You can you can do multifamily and single families, and you can you know you can use other people's money and your money and banks and hard money, right? And and people get can, people get they get deer in the headlights and they don't know where to start, right? Don't worry about any of that. Decide you're going to be successful. Figure out what a good deal looks like in your market. Go figure out how to find those good deals. One, two, three. Don't do anything else. Figure out how to find a good deal in your market. 
go to RIA meetings, talk to investors and network with them. And so when you go to these RIA meetings, it's easy to know who's who are the people in the room that are doing deals. It's everybody's talking to them. They're the guy, everybody's shaking their hand and they got a little bit of a crowd around them. Go introduce yourself. Go talk to them. Ask them. Say, hey, I just, just just getting started, man. Just, what was your last deal like? What did you, you know, what what did you do? What you buy it for? Where was it? Did you flip it? Did you rent it? We love talking about deals, right? Yeah. They'll start, they'll answer your questions. And then now you're building rapport, but you're getting information. Now you're learning where they're buying property. Now you're learning what price point they're buying that property for. Now you're learning, are they flipping? Are they renting? How much of money did they put into it, right? And so you're gleaning all this little information. Figure out what a good deal looks like in your market. So if you if, you, if your market is, uh, you know, two hundred thousand dollars for a single family home, and you got to buy at seventy percent of that, and that's a good deal. Great. Now you know what a good deal looks like. Then pick one strategy for finding good deals. Literally Google how to find good off market deals, and you'll get all kinds of you know direct mail and cold calls and text messages and voice. Pick one. Pick one that fits your budget and fits your personality. Don't tell yourself you're going to be a cold caller if you're going to power at the first time you get cursed out on the phone and you're not going to make the right amount of calls in order to get you a deal. I don't cold call because I don't like that crap. <laughs> so I don't do it. Right. I send mail because that fits my personality better. Right. I'll, I'll send enough mail that I know is going to get me a deal. And so I do that. It's budget friendly for me and it fits my personality. And just keep doing that and doing that and doing that until you get a deal. Once you get a deal, once you get a signed contract, then you go figure the rest out. Then go find a bank, go figure out how you're going to finance it, go find a contractor, all that stuff you're trying to worry about now. Don't worry about it. None of that stuff matters until you have a deal. That's right. And that stuff is easier to find when you have a deal because now people aren't dealing in hypotheticals. So go, go get your deal. I would add a step four, which is go rewind and play this back what he just said because that's probably one of the best answers i've ever heard in terms of a psychological perspective explained from someone in a very simple simplistic because i totally agree with that if you if your brain your brain knows you better than anybody it knows your fears it knows your failures it knows your it knows what's going to trigger you every single thing and it when you said that it, it makes a lot of sense. It's like, it reminded me of David Goggins, right? It, it, I don't know if you are familiar with David Goggins. He's a, he's that um, dynamo running guy who's always running through the mountains. And he was this big guy in the Marines and he was spraying bugs. And one day he decided, right? He decided yeah. that he was going to be a savage, right? And yeah. just his, like his goal, like similar to yours to inspire people to invest in real estate, his was to inspire people to get off the couch, right? And mm -hmm. to do something great, whatever it is. And I think that you pinpointing that the decision, it's probably the best answer I've ever heard. And I've talked to a lot of people. I mean, it's really, really, a answer. I think you, if you're listening to it, go back, listen to what Henry just said again there, because that's paramount until you make that decision, you're going to continue to go in this circle that's and right. you're going to continue to ask stupid questions to people and they're going to not take you seriously. But once you decided, you took yourself seriously and there was no stopping you. That's right. I made the decision and literally the next day I called myself a real estate investor. I didn't know how I was going to buy property. I didn't have any money. I didn't, I didn't know anything about the process. But if somebody said, if I was introducing myself to somebody, I said, I'm Henry, I'm a real estate investor and I do software development for Walmart, right? Like real estate investor became number one. If I didn't believe I was going to be an investor, how would I expect anybody else to be? Right. I just I just always believe in the in the law of attraction and the power of positive thinking. And and I said, I'm just gonna speak this into the world and I'm gonna be this. Who's gonna tell me I'm not? Yeah. So you sound like you're a pretty well-read guy. Where do you get all this 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 wealth of knowledge and this psychology? Do you study a lot? Do you read a lot of books? No, man, you know, I actually I don't, man. Uh, my wife teases me uh because I don't read enough. Um, I had to learn to become a reader once I started to become an entrepreneur. Right. Um, because that's, I mean, that's where all the secret sauce is, man. It's, it's, it's out there in, in the books that people have put out there. And so I've, I've, I've become much more of a reader in the past four years than I ever was in my entire life. Um, but the mindset that I have is it's all, it's all my, my dad preached mindset to me and making sure my mind was in the right place and making sure that, you know, I was in control of my emotions. Me and my son have that conversation often. 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's it's tricky. I'm not I'm not perfect at it by any means, but yeah. um, nobody is. Uh, but but he always he always my dad used to always tell me and he still does. Uh, he, he'd always tell me that I'm special. He said we're we're special people. He was like, you'll start to see, and it's not that you're better than anybody. I'm not saying we're better than everybody else. He was like, but we're special because whatever you want to do, you can go do it. Wow. He was like, and and nothing and nobody can stop you. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot of special people in our family who've done amazing things. And he said, that's the bloodline that we come from. So you're special too. And, uh, you know, when you're young, people, parents say stuff to you like that. And it, it feels like, you know, it's just words, right? You know, but I, you know, and, and you know, my sister, uh, my, my younger sister was the opposite of me in school. She was the, as high of a grade as she can get, that's what she was going to get. If you could get something higher than an A, she was going to get that, right? Like she, she, and she was, a, she's one of the few people on this planet who's still on their plan A, right? You know, when they ask you when you're a little kid, what do you want to be when you grow up and, and, and everybody says something, most people aren't that, yeah. right? She is. She said she was going to be a doctor. She's a doctor. She's one of the best doctors in the country, right? And so, special people in my family. And I, and I, I thought, I thought it, I thought it skipped me. I did. I thought it skipped me. I thought I didn't get it. I thought the special it part. Had a delay. Me. It just had a it delay. Had a, exactly. It was just a little delayed, man. Men mature a little bit later. That's it. My sister graduated college before I did. She's two years younger than me. So I did. So I thought it skipped me. You're getting there, and I could tell just you know, from talking to you that you're a super intelligent guy and that you've got a really good relationship with both your spouse and your family and your father. And I think that that, you know, a lot of people don't have that. I didn't have that growing up, you know, and I think that that's something that, you know, when you don't have that, you really need to understand that you can, even though you don't have it, you can make it happen in the future for yourself, right? And you can create that special bond with your son or your daughter or whatever. That real estate is going to allow you to do that because you don't have to worry about software development. You don't have to worry about having a boss yeah. and say something to piss you off or having somebody who's not as smart as you being your boss. I'm sure you've had oh, that. Happen. Man, that's a nightmare. Yes, many times. Well, Henry, I really appreciate you taking the time tonight uh, to share and to be open with uh, our listening audience. And your story is very special. I'm, I'm very moved by it. I'm, I got goosebumps a bunch of times just listening to what you had to say. I think you're very well spoken. I think you're very articulate. I think that Thank you're, you, sir. I think that you're going to blow your goals off. I think that there's going to be bigger goals set this at the end of this year. I think you're going to be doing major stuff in the Bentonville, Northwest Arkansas area. Thank and you. I think that if you're smart and you're listening right now, not only should you subscribe to all of our socials, find yeah. Henry Washington everywhere. I saw him on LinkedIn. I saw yeah. him on Instagram. I'm on TikTok, Instagram. We're out there. Yeah. So do that. Make sure you give us a five-star review and definitely, definitely get started investing in real estate and make a decision. Like take what the Henry Washington just said, make a decision and de decide to start taking action today because tomorrow's not guaranteed. And we all know that we hear about it all the time with COVID. People are dying. We hear about it with car accidents. I've known a ton of people have just passed away this year. So tomorrow's not guaranteed. That's the biggest reason to start. That's right. Amen. I wholeheartedly agree. You don't have to know everything. All you have to know is that, A, you're going to be good at it. And then go find somebody that's doing it and hang out with them. That's it. Take those two steps. Get started today. Your network is your net worth. I appreciate it. All right. Peace, guys. <laughs>